Nobody's even searching? What is this? Well, I immediately transferred the file to our department and I can assure you that we'll already undertaking action. Doesn't anybody understand me? Doesn't anybody care? Yeah, again, I apologize, Mrs. Hendricks. We informed the missing persons unit of the police and we also notified the 116000 hotline straight away. So they will contact you in a little while. Hotline? Oh my God. That sounds alarming. A hotline, what for? Well, the 116000 hotline is a European hotline for missing children. Um, it's operated by an organization that helps in many ways. And they will contact you very soon and I'm sure they will answer most of your questions. My mother keeps on sending me messages. Almost every day. She's a hypocrite. At home, she and my dad used to fight most of the time. They were too busy with themselves. They never understood me. And now that she's alone, now she's in tears. Hello, Mrs. Hendricks. I am Monica Laval from the 116000 hotline. Yes, hello. I am calling you because we were informed by the police that your daughter Laura is missing. Yes. This must be a very stressful time for you. But we are here to help you. And what is it that you do exactly? We can help you through this, Mrs. Hendricks. You can call us at any time during the day or night. Oh. We'll try to answer all your questions. And we will help you to get all the information from the different official services. Okay. Well, um, for instance, uh, the police. I don't even know whom to call. There are so many departments, so many agents and officers, and they all have little pieces of information, but nobody seems to be in charge. Mm -hmm. And there is not one single person who has all the information needed. That is exactly where we can help. I will be in charge of your daughter's case. If there is anything you want to know, you can always call me. Oh. Even if you need somebody to listen, we are here for you, day and night. Thank you. Will you put my daughter's photo all over the country? Well, not necessarily. Oh, why not? Well, we don't use posters when we have a runaway child. It sends the message we know you're here. This can chase the child further away. Sometimes the child can get scared if it sees the pictures on walls and panics. Oh. Posters are more effective when a child is kidnapped or abducted. Sometimes we choose to work with small flyers. Small flyers? Yes. What, to, what do you mean? Small sized photos that are given to people who work in public places, like railway stations, post offices, shopping malls, airport, etc. Okay. These people see the flyers behind their counters and they can keep an eye open without a child knowing that she or he is being searched for. So what are you going to choose for Laura? Well, decisions regarding posters or flyers will be taken in consultation with the police. Is Laura on any form of medication, Mrs. Hendricks? No. Is Laura mentally or physically disabled in any way? No, no. Did she ever run away before? No. She's 14, right? She's 14, yes. In your declaration, you mentioned a certain Dimitri. Can you tell me more about him? Um, that would be Dimitri Kushner. Mm -hmm. My son's very good with computers. He checked Laura's internet contacts. Dimitri... Dimitri is 17. He knows Laura since November, it seems. They met on MSN. Apparently, he too ran away from home on Friday. Thursday evening, he packed some clothes and he took the visa card of his father. I went to his house. His father says he ran away before that he's going through a difficult period. So I suppose they ran away together. I'm really worried. Of course. Mrs. Hendricks, most of the cases have a happy ending. Children often come back unharmed. Sometimes because they run out of money. Sometimes because they suddenly realize that people are looking for them, that their family loves them, and they are hurting a lot of people. Sometimes they are ashamed of what they did. And what will happen now? Well, the police are already looking for her. But for the moment, we haven't got enough information. She could be anywhere. 
Let me contact the police and find out what we can come up with. I'll call you back. Thank you. Crossing the first border was easy. Crossing the second one, all the way south, is a lot more difficult. Dimi wants to wait. There are too many policemen. Perhaps something happened at the border. It doesn't feel right. He says, maybe we'll change our plan. I don't understand. And I miss home. I know Dimitri doesn't want me to contact my mother, but I just want her to know that I'm okay. And that, that she doesn't have to worry. So I send her a smiley. I know she worries too much. And I read the messages she sends me. You see, now she cares. Why couldn't she show me that she loved me when I was home. Hello, Mr. Debak from Youth Brigade. Speaking. This is Mande Kalval from the 116000 hotline. Uh, yes. I'm uh, calling for Lara Hammers. Yes, we found out that the last time she used the visa card, they crossed the border. Mm -hmm. uh, Dimitri and Laura went south, and this complicates things. Well, did you contact the police abroad yet? No. First, we sent the file to the Public Prosecution Service, and I'm not sure if they appointed an examining magistrate yet. We didn't get an answer. Okay, well, I'll follow up on that. One night, we meet a few guys in a pub. They are 18, 19, and they take us to the nearest city. There, we party the whole evening. We can stay at their place a few nights. There are students sharing a flat. We drive for more than half an hour to I don't know where. We enter the flat and start the party. Beers, breezers, cigarettes and weed. We have a great time. Dimmy dances, drinks and smokes. I drink, but I don't smoke joints. After a few hours, we are exhausted and we fall asleep. The next day, Dimi goes to the supermarket to buy some groceries. When he comes back, Dimi goes crazy. His father blocked the cart. I've never seen him like this. He throws bottles against the wall. He breaks a few glasses in the chair. He scares me. Hello, Public Prosecution Service. Mm -hmm. Can I speak to the examining magistrate in charge of Laura Hammers, please? Yes, hello, this is Alex Lanois speaking. Are we talking about a runaway case or an abduction? Well, we're not sure. We think she ran away with a boy named Dimitri Kushner. Mm. They were last seen abroad, probably trying to get even more south. Ah. Oh. And are there any aggravating circumstances, uh, special conditions, medicines, anything like that? Well, Dimitri did run away before, and he stole the visa card of his father. Mm. But both are normal and healthy children. Ah, I see. Hi, Mom. Laura. Mom, don't worry, I'm OK. Laura, where are you? Mom, I can't talk very long. But, but uh, Laura, come home. Please, I love you, honey. I need money, Mom. Just put it in my bank account. You do want me to eat and sleep, don't you? Yes. So come home. Nothing will happen. I'll protect you. Nobody will harm you or be angry with you. We'll all be so glad to just have you home. How can I come home if I don't have any money? Laura, Laura, please. Not please, I now, promise. Mom. I Mom, I can't. I need more time. But. What is troubling you? What's wrong, Laura? Mom, just transfer the money or I don't know what I might do. Laura. <sighs> Hello, Mr. Lanois. Yes, speaking. Laura has contacted her mother by telephone. Can you give the order to trace her calls? Well, Mrs. Laval, to be honest, the case doesn't seem to be very urgent. 
She's in very good health. Uh, she contacts her mother. There is no immediate danger. And tracing calls is very expensive. I'm sorry, I run a tight budget. I have to make priorities. Look, last week was a holiday. Now, if she returns now, she will only have missed a few days in school. Hello, Monica? Yes, Mrs. Hendricks. Are you all right? No. I'm so tired. I, I feel alone. I feel lost. I have nightmares. I picture Laura in the most terrible situations. It, this has been going on for two weeks now. Mrs. Hendricks, you are not alone. We are here to listen to you and help you get your daughter back home. How is the rest of the family doing? Oh, I hardly have the energy to spend time with my son. I'm so exhausted. Does your son need any help? If you want, I can arrange for professional assistance to come to your place. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> At work, people talk behind my back. They pity me. Of course, I can understand why, but it's killing me. I feel... I don't know what I feel anymore. The next evening, there is another party. Lots of booze and drugs, not only joints. Vimy goes into another room with Patrick, one of the students. I don't know what they're doing. I try to speak to him, but he doesn't answer me. I want to leave the flat, but Patrick grabs me by my arm and throws me on the couch. They all start laughing, and then he takes I don't want to talk about it. Early in the morning, when everybody is sleeping or passed out, I sneak into Dumi's room, secretly get my cell phone and text my mother a message. Uh, Monica? You have to do something. Laura just sent me a text message. You have to trace the call and help her. I'm sorry. The examining magistrate has decided against tracing Laura's calls. Excuse me? I don't understand. I pay taxes, don't I? Don't I have a right to assistance? My daughter of 14 is in another country. Mm -hmm. And the police don't want to use the technology available to find her. Why? Is that against the law? Is it too expensive? Well, maybe they're too stupid. Maybe I should hire a private investigator then. Look, I'm extremely worried. I'll read out the message to you. Mom, come and get me out of here. They took my identity card and locked me up for the weekend. I'm in trouble, Mom. Please help me. I'm really scared. You see, my daughter's in danger now. Do something. For God's sake, do something! The situation has changed dramatically. We are opening a new file. Laura is now a victim of abduction and possibly rape. We believe she is in danger. It is very important to act immediately. The action of the police abroad is outstanding. By tracing her calls, they can locate Laura. And several patrols ask around in local pubs in town and at the university. One of the boys had been bragging to his friend about a wild party with a young girl from a foreign country. It's this friend who points out the flat where Laura is locked up. When they find her in a wardrobe, 